Okay, so we're gonna just run through the projects, check out where they're at. Okay. Normally it should be this so we see it full screen now, is it? Yes, yeah, perfect. Okay. What I'm doing on this slide is then on uh, oops, no, no show, no show. Is um, on the top side is the original one. In the middle, I overlaid them, and on the bottom, it's the new one. Uh, the main goal was to 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 get a um, well drawn uh, Pacifico with good contrast and well proportions. Um, and doing that, I encountered some problems that you sometimes do when you do scripts. Is for example, you can see this in those caps here. Same setup. Top one is the original. Second one is the new one. Um, when using swashy caps, you you always encounter problems where you use all cap settings. So uh, from every cap with swashes I made alternates to be able to use in all cap settings and there will be um, uh, accented as well so the functionality won't be lost in any way and when I go here I have um, made uh, I think I forgot a slide or I forgot I'll put it in afterwards anyway um, I made for some a character's alternates which don't relate directly to the base character because it's better for legibil legibility. For example, the H bar on the bottom you can see, uh, the Croat, uh, and so I have looked a lot on um, legibility. Although Pacifico is made to be very legible, still it shouldn't be it shouldn't clutter. So. Um, but you can see, for example, on the first word was I don't I don't speak Polish, but the first word with L slashes, I made an alternate L slash, and the W is different is just um, um, because it, it, it doesn't connect and didn't find a way to do the connection nicely without adding uh, a ligature, and I didn't want to have a font with with 100 ligatures, so I. I just swapped it by the W cap alternate and it works quite fine. So I did some little tricks like that just to get the flow into the typeface without adding too much tricks. That's actually uh, what I was trying. Here I'm comparing uh, the, the new one with the old one. The gray one is the old one and the black one is the new one. And let me let me uh, just put those pictures on my uh, blog on Pacifico, by the way. Let me look for one picture. Is it? Boop, boop, boop. Um. Yeah. You see this one? Mm -hmm. Okay. The top, the top capitals and lowercase a are the default ones. So when you write a word, start with capital A, you get this one, and uh, with lowercase a, you get this one. The bottom part is the, is the alternate uh, capital A and the final a. So I made for for most of the characters final characters. You can see that on the lowercase a, he has this swashy thing at the end, which uh, I took out on the uh, final a, and they will all be uh, accented. And in this sample, you can all see that I made uh, uh, lowercase accents and uppercase accents, which are a little bit lower, because otherwise it would have been very large. <laughs> hang, hang on a minute. I think that I, I'm still looking at Pacifico 04. Okay, then I think then I'll let, let me change that in. Uh, okay, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, oh, here. I got it. This one. You see this one? Yeah. Well, you see, there you go. Yeah, you see it like uh, a lot of A's with accents? Yeah. Okay. So I'll, 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 um, I'll tell you again. The top one are the default ones. The bottom ones on the left side are the, the alternate capitals. And on the right are the final A's. So the for ex and that will be uh, the final characters will be uh, for all characters final characters will be added, uh, accented and full functional. Um, um, just uh, it just happened along the way. It gives a, a more um, a, um, a better look. And like I explained it on the um, um, I'll change a new uh, screen again. I can give you some samples. Hi. One moment, please. And then. For example, you see this one. Yeah. Oh, that's the wrong one. Excuse me. Yeah, man. I'm almost done. Yeah. Here, now you see if you, if you see Dyson, it's just a, a make up word anyway. When you see when the W against the S, I use the final W to be combined because otherwise I do have I would have had to alter the S very Severe and it wouldn't fit with other characters, uh, but combine it with a f final W, it still gives a flow and it doesn't give a clock. I did the same with the Y, for example, and at the end you can see uh, a final N with a uh, period uh, at the end. Yeah. I hope it was clear. Do you have any questions? Um, I think that um, I can see a few things, like in maybe just in that last image, the final D, which had like a sheared um, exit stroke. Yeah, the um, um, yeah, I've seen that as well. That before the dot, yeah, I would I have to change that, but it's just so fat, tiny things. I have a lot of different characters now, and just. Go through them and see if I missed something. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that there was also an organic which was also like you know cut. You want? Yeah, I've I've have been. Um, um, uh, I'll show you a picture with the organic. One moment. I wasn't sure yet about the organic if I had to do if I wanted to make them round or not. What would what you would what would you uh, prefer? Would you make them? Roundish. Or I think so. Yeah, I think I think that all the terminals would be rounded. Yeah, I've been I've been. Yeah, uh, it's it's not that. Oh no. Do 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 moment. So as you can see, I'm not very gifted in conference calls. Um. It's giving me the wrong one. You see, you see those A's now, or not? Yes. Yes. Ah, okay. I don't see them myself. Okay. Now I see them. Yeah. Um, uh, I did the same with the Cedia. So I'm. Uh, that's one thing. I, one of some little details that I could make them round. There should be no problem at all. What would? You, what do you think? Uh, uh, other people like you, Dave gave wanted to round it one. Do, I don't know. Well, was it, from my perspective, so I think generally the Oganex should respond to the stroke making of the core forms itself, the core mm -hmm. letter form. Now, what's interesting about this design is the radiuses of the terminals are, they vary. There's some moments I see they're very squarish, and there are times they're a little much, they're way rounder in their radius. So I can actually empathize with that. It'd be a little tricky. I'm not sure which, which radius is the appropriate one. 
uh, or the Ogonek myself. You know, because for example, there's uh, in the lowercase a's, you have like the the main stem that mm -hmm. looks very square, like it's a rounded terminal. It, look, it seems, but it's, it's very squarish, uh, and seemingly goes for that kind of when I mean, the bowl of the a, lowercase a gets started. It's again very uh, squarish. It seems like mm -hmm. in its in its radius. Uh, mm -hmm. But then the uppercase A, it's a much rounder shape. Like it's a radius, it's it's uh, the top part of that terminal. Mm -hmm. It's relatively mm -hmm. rounder. So you seem to have, it's, the design seems to have a mix of different radiuses for the terminals. Uh, that's my perspective about that. So, I'm, so I think it's up to you to make it. Do you see it as a problem? Because that can be changed, of course. Well, the question was, was that in the design originally? Well, originally it was. Um, wait a minute. It's, yeah, it's it was probably a hot mess, I imagine. <laughs> uh, let's let's put it smiley. I had to redraw everything. Sure. No, I mean I think that for me, you know, taking a quick look at that, like you can see at the base of the stems, that you know it's flat with rounded corners, um, rather than being, you know, like a circular terminal. Um, and the, I think that just rounding those corners are just a little bit so it's not sharp, um, you know, would, would help. Oh, that was the original? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, wow. But you can see, like, the exit stroke of the A is just very slightly rounded. Yeah, but that's not consistent, Dave. I have to, uh, originally in my... Uh, um, in my uh, I, I mean, in in my uh, designs, I made the exit uh, strokes of the A or all the lower cases and all the upper case slightly rounded, like you could see on the screenshot here. And then I looked at the original um, Pacifico you can use on the internet. He has a thousand versions, by the way. Um, uh, they were straight, and I wanted to. Um, uh, let's say I would prefer rounded terminals, but because uh, you're a little bit keen on keeping some touch with the originals, I made them straight. Okay. Yes. So I would prefer to make everything rounder. Yeah, because, for example, if you don't use the final uh, feature, you'll still get a little bit roundish uh, feeling instead of being cut like. Uh, you just uh, spoke. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I, I knew that it was a bit of a crazy, like uh, Thomas said, a bit of a hot mess with loads of different versions. And, um, you know, that a lot of the terminal treatments were totally different in the in the, in the earlier versions. And I think that, um, you know, that that's basically just sort of technical oversight, that, that the, the, the stroke, you know, archetype of this design is... Round. Okay, then, and would then would you be, would you f f find it okay if I rounded every stroke? So, what you saw being cut at the end, like uh, like ex like uh, uh, exiting strokes for lowercase and uppercase, to make them round again? Yeah, yeah, make specific okay round again. Yeah, <laughs> I'll do that. Fine, good. Make America great again. <laughs> 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 Come on, well, man. Was... It's already 7 a.m. Don't make me more suffering at the moment. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I think if, if, if Europe is going the, the same, if it keeps going the same direction, it won't be better here, so. <laughs> I will all just be burning yeah. all of just a shit show everywhere. America is already great. Don't worry. I'm going back to Africa in a few months. That's my solution. Party. India seems like the most sane place in the world right now. <laughs> okay, so um, next, uh, Alexi, would you like to um, show us what you got? Yeah, sure. Um, so, okay, let's let me fire up my PDF. Um, oh, can I? yeah. Just going to do some screen sharing. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, do you see what I see now? We do. 
โอเคอ่าก็อ่า yeah I'm just gonna go through the PDF I I put up yesterday uh, this is like showcasing the new font in action Uh, the, uh, the, these are uh, the four <coughs> weights that I uh, created. Mm -hmm. They uh, just uh, they are um, the same as the legacy versions. This was made um, so that I could copy um, the existing non-Latin part into the, the refurbished uh, Latin design and quickly publish this because mm -hmm. it also has Greek, Cyrillic and Kylie which will require uh, from one to two weeks of work if, if I do everything properly. Um, so, and this video shows four weights but I also made extrapolated another weight which I will show later. Mm -hmm. uh, so here is the waterfall. As you can see the, the difference is very subtle and I, I would prefer um, well like redistributing the weights because I think we can actually only squeeze in one in between between these two masters mm -hmm. like it's just um, that would be like a milestone for the future mm -hmm. but I think the two uh, masters are good so like this is the only fix that major fix that can be considered in the future. Yeah. But also there are like compatibility, you know, backwards compatibility issues, so this is under question. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the glyph um, repertoire I have now, and this is the full GF Latin Plus. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's done. Uh, I've set up the mer the printing classes today. I'm going to finalize printing and uh, shoot. Uh, so this is the before and after. So I I did a lot of work on the proportions. They were fully reworked, as you can see from the view, because they were just uh, inconsistent across the font and. I use the Kylie glyphs as a um, beacon to, um, uh, or as a reference for mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the Latin was very inconsistent and it was hard to find like answers there. Mm -hmm. But you can see that some glyphs, um, uh, like the E, has this fancy terminal. I try to um, leave all the details as much as possible. And the author, original author Daniel points out that Y is very characteristic and the J. I try to retain as much of the original character as possible, but um, a, a lot has changed. And uh, this was completely redrawn rather than like making it compatible and fixing those. <coughs> it, it was a uh, impossible task, so it was redrawn from scratch. And yeah, that. So and uh, the author actually liked the how it went. So I'm happy about that. Uh, we we had some discussions that I I, I made them. Uh, I got some critique in the first weeks that the B was uh, was different from the original and uh, then I changed it and also we had some back and forth communication with Daniel about um, some other glyphs. I addressed them and I think now Daniel is happy so um, Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so next up I'm going to show you uh, a, um, another uh, Another screen. Uh, yeah, here it is. So this is um, uh, a font specimen 
I like re reworked from uh, ways and cloud seggers um, uh, like web specimens. Here are the four weights and the extra bold one. It is um, extrapolated and ideally it, it needs a separate master, but I, I think it might work if, if you need this bonus. I made this um, spacing adjustment because it was useful for me during development when spacing was too tight. So I could um, like, even action. So um, so <coughs> these standard ligatures, I just kept only three because the other ones are I I, I placed them in the the. the discretionary ligatures instead because they don't really fit this design and I don't want them as a default. And so I have there are, are some bugs in the open type features which I'm going to address like this Dutch diagraph. I'm not sure why the browser is doing this. Wow. Uh, hmm. uh, I need to look into this. And then, well, th this this feature is not programmed. It the capital <coughs> asset as a contextual alternate is something that um, glyphs. They have an article about that, and and it is in our recommended section. It's not compulsory. So then I have case specific features, uh, but only the parentheses. They are different. The other uh, punctuation marks are the same. So this feature works. The dotted I, I think it works. The Catalan, I think, doesn't work. Uh, I will look into this. This Sedilla so works. So the IJ and the the dealer would need some attention today. And I also made added Vietnamese to this um, web, web uh, specimen. Here is the Vietnamese. I'm sorry. Nice. Sorry. It's too fast. OK. Yeah. <clears throat> so when I was doing the metrics passes, I made a script for that. So uh, next, uh, I want to I want to show you this because it might be useful for the workflow in the future. So here it is. Um, you see the, the left kerning group and right kerning group in the bottom, they are already assigned. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove all the kerning groups. Uh, delete kerning group. Okay, there. So now you see all the kerning groups are empty. Now I select all this, and then I run the script. There. Okay, the script. Is. And now, every character has a left and right turning group. And Gerk, it was one of Gerk's recommendation that even if um, a specific glyph like has no siblings, it's like unique. It's better to have it in a separate. A uh, kerning class for faster kerning for like optimization. So this script does this, and 
but <clears throat> there are some some things I couldn't figure out. Like for example, like you see, I <clears throat> and I dot list, they have uh, identical values, but there's usually this case when you have like B and T I dot list in Turkish, and for for this reason, I think it's not viable to to have I and I dot list in the in the same cla <coughs> class because you would rather um, that I dot list would inherit values from N. In other words, just just put it to the um, N kerning class like this. And yeah, that would be the ideal scenario. But when I try to um, hard code this in the script, what Glyphs does it, 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 it copies the values from i dot list to all i based glyphs. And I'm not sure how to resolve this. Um, so this is like probably a built in behavior of glyphs or, or the, the script itself. Because it, it just, every component, it, it um, inherits the values of its um, parents. And uh, I asked Gerrit about this. Uh, he, well, I'm, I'm waiting for his reply. But for now, I just used, like, I just set up the values, and then I manually um, tweak some glyphs. Oh, and also, like, like for, for example, uh, for uh, this glyph is not in the. Um, the default set, so I have to assign classes individually, and <coughs> and also G, it, it has its own separate class. But um, for this particular design case, I would assign O to the left class and um, U to the <coughs> right class. So this script does require some tweaking, but it gives you a quick start, and and all the glyphs in <coughs> in the Latin plus encoding are there. So I think that. You can give this a, a try, and, and, and it can save you some hours of work, hopefully. And let me know if you find this useful, or if you think something might be changed. I will, I will also extend it to, <coughs> to Latin Pro and Cyrillic in the future. Yeah, awesome. Great work. Thanks. Yeah. Um, my, uh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I want to s specify that. And another thing. Yeah, uh, U horn. I, I wanted to add a, a separate class for U horn because the metrics are different, and I couldn't do it for the same re reason because it in inherits, you know, the, the value. So this is what I, I do this manually, and also H. This is one of the glyphs that doesn't work. The H bar it inherits the values from its parent. So I have to do this manually for now. And then I have, like, uh, like the currency symbols, <coughs> like the, you see the, the left kerning group is H bar. And I think this is useful for <coughs> many currency symbols. There may be better solutions for uh, kerning class, for currencies. Let me know if you find a better solution. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. OK, awesome. Um, I think for me, the question uh, kind of you know segues into uh, Mark and Lance's presentations, I think, which is about, um, you know, the sort of like now that the design work is wrapping up, we need to, um, you know, put these projects into GitHub and define sort of where they're going to live. Um, and so for this script, I also, you know, I see that it's just in the, it was in the projects GitHub, and now you've made an Alexi Glyph scripts GitHub repo. Uh -huh. um, uh, I think that's probably good. You know, um, it's good for you to have your own Glyph scripts, um, you know, repos. Um, what my, I guess what I'm wondering is, you know, maybe, you know, we where, where should we be documenting this? And that I have this old, 
GF docs repo with some of the old documentation. And the, I think that probably I should just move that all into the main GitHub slash Google slash fonts repo. Oh, that would be great. <clears throat> because, oh yeah, I also wanted to show you another thing. Because, um, yes, just a second. In my latest patch, I made some documents, and I think we can move them to a um, wiki section, like um, uh, Kalapi suggested. So I made this like markdown document with like XML, glyph state XML file, custom filters, and then like some. Uh, Shortcuts to, to generate currencies, like some things that optimize the workflow. Yeah. And also, uh, yeah, these glyph lists. Um, where else? Uh, yeah, oh, there's a troubleshooting section. Hmm. So this could be moved like to a separate repo, I think. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we're, uh, yeah, and the recommended section, I, it, it got some additions. Like for example, I discovered that if you add in these glyphs, then <coughs> then glyphs app will, will generate many characters like automatically from components. If mm -hmm. you don't have TV, then basic won't do the magic. And I think it's useful to like have them in the recommended section because they're they are unnecessary in the um, in the glyph list and similar with Vietnamese there are some things that can improve the workflow and then like the Polish Grushka mm -hmm. so all of this is um, mm -hmm. documented yeah okay so yeah I, mean, I think that what I would probably like I mean I don't know um, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think that probably just moving everything into one document would be yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's sort of like there's like a Google Fonts handbook. Oh, yes, yeah, that, that's good, good. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, um, I, can, I can sort of work on that. Um, and I think that just having it in Markdown, you know, on, on GitHub's probably good. Um, uh, potentially, we could use the GH Pages branch to have an actual web page. Um, yeah. But this is this is kind of something that I'm hoping that maybe Larsa and, and Mark can sort of take yeah. care of. Um, um, I could use the the web generator that I used for the item project to just get those Markdown files and make a website out of it. Yeah, I guess. Um, I mean, that's, that's kind of. Mm -hmm. what yeah. Stand for just use an old yep. repository and generate a web page for it. So yeah. we could log into that when there's time or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that, like I'm, you know, talking with Omar about you know having like a Google Fonts blog uh, with this you know new content from Flavio, um, and that uh, yeah, it would be great you know to to um, you know have a little blog post that says here's technical information about how, you know, type for type designers. Um, and um, and then, yeah, maybe just a little GH Pages website, um, you know. Yeah, we, uh, can, we can talk about that. Yeah. I mean, how, how, to, how to make it. Yeah. So there, there are probably three ways or so, like yeah. static page generators that all do the job, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, uh, who wants to go next? Yeah, I can go if you want. Go for it. All right, um, time to screen share, I think. So basically, for the last few days, while we've started a new sprint, me and Lasse have infinite recursion. Okay, let's get rid of that. 
We've mainly been looking at a build chain, but now we've jumped into helping you guys clean up the repositories. So after yesterday's meeting, we're looking at Montserrat and Francois 1 so that they can go to Calipi and Thomas. So I've been looking at Francois 1, and we have been going through the... Eclisk, so just seeing what we can do. So our aim is to basically in the future is give you guys repositories, which has a lot of the stuff already done, so you can just get on and design things and not have to repeat this process. We're thinking about trying to script it, but at the moment we're doing it all manually, so we understand all the problems that are coming up. And also, since a lot of the stuff is working on pre-existing projects, um, at Daltamarg, I had, we had quite a few scripts to quickly do things, like I've just now just quickly written a, a glyph comparison script, so I can just quickly check which glyphs are shared amongst all the fonts. If, It's always funny that when you go and try and show something and then it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's um, now it's just trying to help you guys set up repositories and get this thing moving quicker. So Calipi had already started um, Anton and Bevan and Arnheim, Anaheim. Uh, we've looked at the structure of how he's made his repositories, where we have like a new version folder for the fonts and then a legacy for including the old stuff. And I also have a few questions about this. Uh, Dave, sorry if I'm hijacking this a bit. Can I? That's uh, okay. I think this is my application. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that um, you know, it's good for the, the whole team to, you know, have a, have a sense of how these things should be set up. Yeah. Um, so, for Francois 1, I've made my folder all lowercase, but I might have got Calipi's naming. We kind of got into yesterday. We didn't know whether to make the folder's camel case or not, or we didn't care about it, or it's benign. And... So, I have a... Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this document. I'm going to share a link, which is basically like a high-level summary of what me and Lassie are doing on this project. And for making the repositories, there are a few sources going around. Obviously, I just mentioned there's Calipi's directories. And then there's also the requirements in projectchecklist.md, which mentions having the three files, and which we just discussed, and a few other checklists of different things. Um, there was one main problem I found with Calipi's folder setup. I don't know if this was just because of every font that he was doing at the time, but every single folder for the reworks that he did, he uh, version numbered them version 2. With me and Lasse are now working on fonts which are, might be on version 3 or version 5, so we can't go back to version 2. So it can't be an ab absolute version number we use anymore. So yeah, I mean, from, from, from my perspective, you know, there's this kind of trade-off between using all the features of Git and GitHub and keeping things simple. And, um, you know, from, from my point of view, there shouldn't be any version numbers, you know, in the Git folders. Um, uh, however, you know, Pablo Bolari, for example, has, um, you know, he has the right, what I recommended where you have a sourced folder and a fonts folder, yeah. which, you know, rather than yeah. binary, um, yeah. And um, then within sources, he has an old folder, and then he puts old versions which are named in there. Um, and then he has, you know, the, the version in the file name for the Gliss file. So there, there isn't um, a folder version, but there's a, a version in the file names to keep, keep all of the sort of important versions concurrent. And then, obviously, over time, as he's committing the work, then the file name doesn't change much. Okay. It doesn't change as he's, as he's working. 
but then when he you know sort of wants to like attack what in Git would be tagging a version, then actually he he duplicates it. Okay. Yes, as we said, we have binary at the moment, so and version two, so maybe version two we can have source, and then we have a folder called legacy. No, the legacy stuff can go. I mean, the only reason that's there is because it's needed during the work process. Right, copy? Oh, okay. Okay. So we don't want to really keep a historical reference to it. For this. No. I mean, it's, it's there. If you want it, you can, you know, check out an old version through Git. Yeah. So okay. uh, legacy and, and the old folder is, is more or less the same, but the old folder, we don't want to have that one as well. Oh. Which one? folder that Pab Pablo Imparelli uses, old, and then copy all the stuff into there? Well, I, I mean, I don't think so. I mean, he had it, but um, I don't see any purpose to that. Because yes. if you want to go back to an old version, then you should be using Git's, you know, checkout feature. Um, okay. uh, I mean, I, 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 this is, you know, the, 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 you know, designers have got their less sophisticated ways of doing things, um, and I would like to see, you know, um, you know, the Google Fonts collection having some kind of leadership here, you know, that, that we should be showing people how things should be done. Okay, so. Uh I'd suggest that when we start a repository with new files or whatever, that we just make a tag, a version tag with version 1.0 or whatever yeah. we have as yeah. a font version. Yeah. And then it's kind of the proper way. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. That's cleared everything up. I think that's good. So one, one question I have is that um, in some of the repos, in many of the repos, the fonts folder has the binary fonts. And then um, in some of them, they have TTX versions of the binaries, so that the repo doesn't actually have binaries. And then the only place to get binaries is from something which has been released, either using the GitHub releases feature or you know just get it from Google Fonts itself. Um, and then the TTX versions allow you to see the diffs, you know, version to version, um, uh, and. I'm not. I'm not sure how useful that is. Um, I I know that some people don't like to have the binaries in the repository because people are going to to get the binaries from there, and for you know because it could be work in progress or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, it kind of that's kind of a good argument against real binaries in the repository. Mm -hmm. Because especially if it's work in progress and you did not update the version number or whatever, you know, you don't. If you start something, you don't always add a new version number to the stuff. Mm -hmm. Then people get kind of strange files. So I don't know. It's it's kind of I understand totally the reasoning. It's just a bit complicated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Okay, and then, um, sorry, sorry, Mark, so, so just um, the uh, final thing on this. So, um, so we, we have github.com slash Google Fonts, which can contain its own repos or forks of other repos. And we talked about um, having those set up in a particular way to present a very uniform, consistent layout. So have you guys looked any further into that since we last discussed it? Uh, not particularly. This is why no. I wanted to bring it up just now, because we looked at okay. Calipi's files, and we have a few sources. I think this has helped clarify it a lot, but we'll try some things out, but I don't think we're there yet, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. I sure, no problem. No. We need to do a few more families, and then we can see some patterns developing, and then we can come up with a decent source. Now we've just looked at two. Maybe in six or seven, we'll have something where we're like, OK, we're confident this will cover all basis is. Mm -hmm. um, also, I would, I personally like the the um, 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 repository files instructions in the project check checklist markdown of the GF Docs repository. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm not sure if we should, should you know, 
kind of the sources folder. It's very you know what to, to expect there. It's better than the version dot zero zero folder because we don't know the, the versions and kind of so maybe we should just try to, to stick to that one. It's it's a sane um, proposal, I think. It's it's around for longer. Some repositories already use it. Mm. And it's kind of well described what to do. Yeah. So, um, so Thomas, Jack, Calapi, Lexi, do you get, do you have any um, you know sort of suggestions or requests for how your how the project folders should be laid out? So um, I I was never in uh, favor of the version thing because I've always been used to the sources folder. The reason I uh, used the version 2 was to kind of make it friendly for uh, people who would, before f the final thing goes live, uh, I was expecting other team members to review stuff and all, and it would be easier for them to find it. So that's why it was kind of a work in progress uh, folder uh, organization. But I think, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all up for there being a source folder, and then even the binary is not being. Uh, on there because we expect uh, uh, at this moment we expect that we generate the binaries directly from glyphs and uh, I mean if somebody wants to make the binaries they can just uh, clone the repository and make them themselves um, yeah I mean uh, the source folder with the sources uh, with the and also like the TTF auto hint control file and all can now be specified within glyphs, so I think uh, a glyph source, having just a glyph source and then test documents, I think, is a good idea. Um, and I think we should deprecate all the other things. Uh, yeah, so about the, the folder structuring, I used uh, two different approaches. The first approach was rough uh, as uh, Universal font repository uh, layout, and the other one was Calapi's suggestion. I prefer Calapi's because it's not so strict. Um, well, I can just show you quickly. So, but basically, we want to have strict. Do you want to have strict? <laughs> So this, this yeah, we want to have a uniform folder structure so that it kind this of is a folder structure looks kind of organized. From unified font repository, this is uh, uh, these files should not be in there actually. So it has the sources. Um, I also made extra folders for metrics for tests, and I made an extra folder for legacy. This is something that uh, is like. An idea from Kalati. I, I like this idea to have a legacy folder because I can always compare my font to the legacy version. It, it is quite often I this was helpful. Then I have a documentation folder where I put the promo PDFs and um, redesign proposal, and I also have a web specimen folder <coughs> with, which I use a subtree push to push it to GH pages, GH pages, and I think that having like Universal web specimens that, if we work on a Raisin project, we just can copy this folder, then put in the fonts in the folder, and then test our fonts live, like similar to the one I showed you. That would be helpful. I also wanted to show you a fix about kerning. I think it's it's. Uh, if this is something I wanted to ask the font engineers, uh, Mark and Lasse and Kalapi. Can I, can I do a demonstration now about turning? Like problems in preparation, preparing files, Dave? Um, yeah, I, I guess so. Um, uh, Thomas, Jacques, what, what do you think? Uh, would you, would you, are you interested in this? Well, the first question I guess to, to Mark and Lasso is, generally I'm open whatever process works best for the team. So. Uh, if you have a, process, a best practice that you guys would like to you decide on, just clear instructions how to move forward on it. That's the basic thing I need to know. 
Yeah, I'm with Thomas there. Um, I think I'll follow your lead when it com comes to 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 a folder uh, um, making. The only thing I like to do uh, is to uh, keep keep versions per date. So every day I work on a font, I'll make a new glyph file and add a date to it, just for my uh, own sake. That's how I work. I don't work in one file and keep rewriting that file. I just make every day a new file. It's okay, so we should maybe add add some uh, yeah, some old folder as Pablo and Pirelli does. So you can always put your 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 you know versions in there and keep one current version at a central place. And we you know that, that will be kind of for like for automation to, to automate this stuff, it's kind of important that, that the one canonical update source file has the same name in the same place. Hmm. Because then then we, we don't have to change the build script every time you, you, you add a new version or something like that. So the, the one you want to have built should should be kind of yeah, you should know forever how it's called. Mm -hmm. sorry, my, my, concern, uh, sorry. My, my concern is flexibility. Say if we have like a strict strict guidelines for folders, is there an option to <clears throat> to add like an extra folder for I don't know for a web specimen, Folder? like extra folders for a web specimen or for some kind of test folder? Or like something additional that may be required for this project, like I don't know, kerning list, matrix data. Um, so kerning list, stuff like that, could be in the sources folder. I mean, yeah, the, yeah. So uh, tests and whatever. I mean, of course, we can add folders uh, like that. But at least you know some of those folders we, we definitely need, like the sources folder with the one or two files or whatever. That we want to build into the fonts. That's kind of the most important thing. And then other folders, I think, are yeah, we can talk about that. So it, it's not a problem. Like if I add like InDesign source or something to the question would be if, if we if we give another folder to put the stuff into like extra, and then you can do whatever you want there. Well, there's, there's, there's dozens and dozens. I mean, there's like over 100 projects from the last 12 months. So um, I can get you the list of all of those GitHubs, and you can look at them and see how all those different designers have laid stuff out. Yeah, it's probably different always. And it's it's for a project, depending on what you do, it's, it's kind of, you know, in the details, it, it may change. But so I'm kind of... That's that's why I say so the the stuff that's 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 um in this uh, GF docs document is kind of same, I think. It's a sources folder that's important. Um, see, there's a tools folder that's kind of nice. Would, and there's there's this this um other thing, Dave. That's more more your thing to to decide. But there's um, ofl.txt, authors.txt, and contributors.txt. Should we add these to every repository that we touch? So yes. we have a com common style of that? Yes. And do we add uh, some Google um, 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 author? Is, is there some, some you know, Google at Google? No, no, you guys, the contract, you guys own your own copyrights. Okay, so the designers would add themselves as uh, contributors and authors, mm -hmm. and we, Mark and I, probably only as contributors because I don't think that we really deserve the copyright. No. Um, I mean, I, but I don't know. Um, if you think that what you do is subject, you know, is is, is sort of expression, then. Um, yeah, well, we are going just most of the time. I think just just run scripts and fix things, and it's not really yeah, like. Yeah, no, I don't think that it's. I don't. I don't think that it's probably. Me neither. Yeah. Um, so, but that, that would be kind of a, a case for the contributors. 
or whatever, or nothing. I don't care, actually. I, I think, I think actually, no. So, so contributors... Um, no, no, yes, yes. So, so I think contributors is an appropriate phrase if you wanted to. Um, there's also, you know, the idea of a font blog where we, you know, list the contributors. Um, but um, I think that that's probably more just in the readme. Um, and um, obviously the, the main place is the Google Fonts directory because that's where everyone... If most people in the world are actually going to look, very few people are going to look at GitHub. So, um, uh, so okay, so um, uh, Thomas and Kalapi, do you guys have anything to, um, to, may, to may, review? May I, may I add one remark or question? Please. Uh, to the folder um, um, suggestion. Maybe to 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 keep a little bit flexibility, wouldn't be a, wouldn't be it a solution to have um, one folder named exactly like um, default like a default name, and um, that a final version of font should be in there, and uh, all other folders can be like flexible, just to to so that you can run your scripts and the designers can use their own way of working combined. So have one end folder, uh, whatever. Well, the, 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 I think that the way that these, you know, the, 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 the goal for the engineers is that there are some requirements, there are some things that must be there, and it's a problem if they're not. And if you have additional files, then they just get ignored. Okay, just was an idea. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I think that I'm agreeing. Um, Well, let me hear what you want, and I'll change the structure of my folders. I don't. I'm okay with it. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not so important. Okay. So, Thomas, can I be? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't, I don't have anything on Alpha Slab to share, but I have several things with regards to uh, the vertical metrics and uh, uh, I don't know the sprints with the three fonts. I don't know if those are, I don't think that that's important, but I think it's important to kind of be on the same base with regards to the vertical metrics, uh, because that vertical metrics information should ideally be in the glyphs file. So when people are working on, um, on doing these one day, two day, three day sprints, uh, I think it, would sh it should be part of the sprints to calculate these values and put them in the correct. Uh, I agree. Uh, yeah. Pa parameters within glyphs. Um, so I don't know if all of you were following <laughs> the lengthy discussion uh, on my uh, on, on the discussion forum, uh, but I think uh, John Hudson kind of he kind of encapsulated it quite well. Uh, in addition to like some small things that he added, which are peculiarities on the Windows platform. Um, so I think uh, I let me just quickly open it, and we're going to. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Clappy. I, the call broke up. I missed the last like minute. Uh, can you hear me now? Okay. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, after I. After I kind of uh, did my research into this, I um, my con I had two possible uh, directions as a conclusion. Uh, so the one, uh, the first one was to kind of have um, we continue using the 125 percent as has been kind of used on every project, uh, uh, and all legacy Google fonts used. Uh, the same metrics on I in every uh, in every metrics field. Um, so one of the solutions was to continue using the 125 uh, percent in the OS2 typo metrics calculations and update only the win metrics to kind of reflect the vertical extent of the black bit, vertical extents of the black bits, uh, and then use the typo metrics flag. So so that the font use so that the um, uh, the shaving system knows 
or the the thing knows that the correct metrics to use are the typo metrics. Uh, and this kind of keeps everything consistent uh, with previous versions, but it fixes uh, clipping problems. Uh, so this was one thing that was kind of, this was the one route, and the other route was to kind of change things a bit uh, and make them a bit more aligned with what the specs, what the spec, OT spec expects from a font, which is to kind of um, have that 125% in the line gap instead instead of uh, in the OS2 typo line gap instead of kind of uh, applying it to the typo sender and typo descender. So uh, in the end, you would have the typo sender, which is the highest point on either the capital H or the ascender H or L, whichever is taller. And then the typo descender would be uh, the U font UPM minus the typo ascender. So it's equal to the M. So ascender descender is equal to the UPM of the font. And then including that 125% legacy into the typo line gap. So in this case, the typo line gap would always be 250 units on, on a 1,000 UPM uh, font. Uh, and then with regards to the OS2 win ascent and win descent, we kind of measure it. Uh, so win ascent would be equal to y min, and uh, win descent would uh, ascent y max and descent y min. And uh, I think there is a script uh, already by uh, Huerta Typographia, which he, which finds the highest and lowest. Uh, extent, I think. Yes, lowest and highest glyphs. It's in where that it's in the glyphs uh, scripts from where the typographia, typographica, and it's in check and lowest and highest glyphs. So this gives you that value automatically. And then uh, the HHEA ascent, descent, and line gap would be exactly the same as the OS2 typo ascender, typo descender, and typo line gap. So this is we kind of. There is some amount of shift when we use the new, um, the, the second root, uh, but the line gap remains the same. The line height, the line spacing remains the same. So there won't be any. There'll be like a, like there'll be a block free flow, but not uh, intra line reflow. So those were like the two, um, the, the two solutions that were, uh, that I found, and I think we are going with the. First one for all the legacy projects, and the second one for every new, all new projects. Is that right, Dave? Is that what we've? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. So I know it's a bit dense, but but uh, it, it's. I think it's. I think if if I make a, if I make a, or if you refer to the. I think I, I think it would help with me making like a recipe. It's easy. It's similar to what's already there, but a more kind of uh, readable recipe of how to calculate the values. So I think maybe that maybe it can. Um, is this? It sounds scriptable almost. Yeah. If yeah. we write the requirements, we could just write a script for this, and then we can run it when we set up the repositories. Dave, what do you think of that? So yeah, you, you, well, you need to rerun it at the end when you export because of the because it was responsive to the bounds. But yes, um, I think that having a script to just fix the vertical metrics to Google's recommendations is is the ideal way to go. But um, and then I think that having you know a blog post style illustration similar to you know the kind of thing you know that some foundries sometimes put out. Um, Explaining what's going on and what the issues are, and you know the legacy issues. Um, I think that would be you know very helpful for you know lots of people in the community because there's always confusion about this topic. Uh, it's I think Dalton marks on version six now of their attempt with this. <laughs> right, right, yeah. I mean, there's <laughs> exactly it's there for one, two, three, four, and it's still going. Yeah. So so um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm keen to um, you know. Have like you know Galapi's research on in the context of the Google Fonts collection written up for the design community, and um, I think that that's maybe secondary to having a script. Um, 
and that that's something that we should allocate time for in the schedule, you know, that you guys have to do that. So if you could add that to that document that's tracking your must-have and nice-to-haves right now, that would be great. Um, since I'll look at Calipi's write-up on this, but I'm skeptical whether to implement this or not in the two repositories we have to prepare for Monday. Can this be No, I don't think this is necessary. We only need to set this okay. at the end. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this, are this there is... any more questions for the vertical metric stuff? Uh, if you if you want to ask me privately, I'm happy to answer any questions. I'll read it first and get back to you. Sure. Yeah, I think we we need to document it somehow for for us, but yeah, I have the screenshots that show the reflows and stuff, so it'll be. I hope that'll be useful as well. Hmm. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, that's all from from me for now. Okay, so do we have something left on the list? Oh, Dave is gone. I think right. he's stuck. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. waiting for Dave, but Dave is yeah. <laughs> like frozen away in time. And uh, Thomas? Yeah, I'm up. So, doo -doo -doo. so my raisin project was quicksand. I've been documenting on Dribble basically every day at the end of the day what I did. I sent you guys a link to the projects page on Dribble for it. I'll screen share it too so you can see it on the screen. So the first day you only did the R. <laughs> that's not that enough. That's not how to interpret it. Uh, more of a demonstration. <laughs> um, so, for example. And then you spent the whole day on the peso. <laughs> yep, then the next day on the X and the Q and the C. And then only on the Q and the X again. <laughs> um, all right, so the walkthrough. So basically, uh, there was also a presentation doc I gave in the beginning uh, with a proposal what to do with quicksand. So the general, to summarize it, was basically it was basically everything was the same stroke weight, horizontal, vertical strokes. So a big issue was was just blobbing up everywhere. So the idea was introducing contrast, then harmonizing the light master to the bold master, and therefore the interpolations between the instances. Uh, harmonize those two by proportion and spacing and all that good stuff. So this is kind of documenting that process. And at the end of the day, uh, I would usually pick a, a part of the project that was kind of very concrete of what I did, a very good demonstration, or I thought what I did that day to document it. So this first one shows with the R. The object on the left is the original, the middle is the is the adjustment, and the right is the overlay. So as you can see, there's been an introduction of joint contrast and some design, and actually some discussion on the Google discussion, Google form discussion page about this. Uh, Alexi pointed out some point issues of this was that there's by introducing these elements there's some design decisions that are going to have to be made uh, basically here like this kind of like bubbling out of the terminal to R to get this contrast in the joint built in there so that's an example of some of the design decisions that had to get made in the other letters to do the compensate for that uh, moving up uh, in the X Q and C uh, basically, Q is a good example. In the original on the left column, uh, in the Q, you can tell that it's sa basically the same weight, horizontal and vertical stroke. So it makes the optically looks like it's a hor it's stro it's heavier in the horizontal stroke than the vertical. Uh, and also the X height was increased, as you can see in the center column. And report in curvatures, the rate of the what's the right word? The velocity of curves basically for the rounds had to get compensated. So uh, I know in the past Jock pointed out that the rounds in the quicksands original are very almond shape. They're very flat, the rounds. So introducing, kind of extending out the handles to kind of create a more 
smoother velocity of the curves for the rounds uh, helps make the letters kind of sit better in the forms and the spaces better. Uh, and the X in this example is introducing some tapering in the, in the diagonal strokes. So mainly on the secondary stroke. So the primary going from top left to bottom right, that's maintain its main weight. Probably add a little bit to make it work optically. Um, but then from the top right to bottom left, that's thinner and has some tapering going towards the center. Uh, just try to thin out that stroke a little bit. And I was diddling out with that X some more because that's I find it an annoying letter to deal with. Uh, but in the Q, mainly, uh, it was the kind of, again, fixing some proportion stuff with it and trying to compensate for some of the blobbiness that occurred, mainly in the lightweight. You can see that joints leading from the tail of the Q to the main body of the Q, that had to get compensated in some way. Uh, so the main thing at Solution I did was kind of thin out that joint stroke, the stroke of the tail going into the main bowl to compensate for that. So the next one shows kind of now the two masters looking at each other, some of the proportion changes that have occurred moving forward on, uh, and how these introductions of contrasts are playing out. Then moving over to the extended Latin set, basically we started working on the extended Latin. Uh, there were some design decisions made in the original on the right side that thought it could be improved. For example, in the, the AE, it's uh, based on the. I basically introduced a, a two-story form to make it more legible because basically it's too close to the O E uh, uh, diphthong otherwise. So that was introduced, uh, and things like the Olganek. You can also still hear very clear the proportion shifting that's occurred. Uh, it went from this kind of very top, the, the eye of the E being very huge in, in proportion to the body, kind of harmonizing it more and the Ogunet kind of being more naturalistic, coming out of the main stroke and its terminal being treated uh, similar to the main strokes. Then dattling some other, with other accent, other drawing characters of the Google Plus set. Then basically now proofing through, we did a documentation of the proofing. And then applying that to the bold master Then we got the things like the peso, for example. Uh, there was a discussion again on the Google, Google group how to deal with this. Uh, the solution I came to was uh, doing tapering in the in inside strokes to get that white in as much as possible in the bold master. Uh, the light doesn't need to do that. It held up fine. But in the bold, it was uh, an issue and some of the design structures. So this is kind of the solution I came to for how to deal with this. Uh, then start introducing the alternate characters and stylistic sets we were proposed. So this was a first draft of the two-story A, had to deal with it. And then now it's starting to looking at basically everything built out, getting all the compatibility working, uh, all the, how basically interpolating the instances, seeing if we can get two in, fiddling out with that. It's a little, it's a little, I think I got figured out. I'll switch over to what I have now as a proof right now. So, let's see, where is that PDF? Okay, so here's the, here's the kerning proof on the before. To give you context, and then, can I, can I toggle it? Let's see. No, okay, I gotta switch back and forth. Okay, so that's before. Mm -hmm. And apologies, you guys. Here's after. So generally, things like for all the proportions been spaced, it's been spaced out uh, relatively a good amount. And let's see. And I thought actually it was nice is in words. I thought this actually the alternate characters looked really well uh, overall. Let's see. That's the uh, version one. Ah, uh, here we go. So let's see. Fine. I did both an alternate A and an alternate G. Let's see if I get lines on. Apologies. Give me a second. Here. So man.
Okay, so you can see the alternate G. Kind of fun, like, cobble-style G. And uh, in Ecuador, you can see the, the two-story A. And the progress of today is kind of reviewing the, in getting the instances correct, kind of working the right steps of it, doing one last round of checking for uh, the kerning, how that's working, how the spacing's working, and just tightening up the last details for the end of the day today. That's the game plan for the end of the day today. Cool. Yeah, this, is, this looks great. Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. I think the Mummy Steps page. Oh, whoops. Yeah, Dave, sorry, you broke up, so I didn't hear you. What, what would you um, like to see? Have you seen Pablo's Family Steps page? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, maybe maybe that could be helpful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's great, man. Good job. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's funny. Actually, if you toggle back and forth between the before and after, and I can't really show you guys that, it's a dramatic, it's a surprising difference. It's like, it's the same design. You can feel it's the same design, but uh, it's like the soul got, it got soul got pumped into it from something that wasn't there before. It's nice. I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with the success of the last three weeks. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, unfortunately we couldn't make it, but uh, I know that Omar and Rob are very pleased with these kind of soul. Improvements and um, even though it's not, you know, like totally obvious that everything's, um, you know, different. You know, some of these changes, like the X or, um, you know, uh, the, some of the others, you know, it's, it's very subtle. But um, yeah, I think it, it does all add up to a big difference. Cool. All right. Well, that's good. Um, uh, yeah, I think you, it would be great if you can um, spend a bit more time, you know, um, writing things up. Um, you know, uh, Jack has, you know, posted some sort of nice before and after images showing off some of the features, sort of just all in one image. I think it would be helpful for Flavio, um, you know, to sort of try and collate things and make like a, a bigger set of before and after images if you finish things off. And um, then, yeah, if you, you know, have the link to your GitHub, with the files to finally compile, then um, Lassa and uh, and Mark can be working on, you know, getting those fonts ready to ship. Cool. Oh, one note that I do want to share is that so I was just ambiguous on this decision. I'm not very big experience with theme and ease, so I chose to not design those characters. Uh, but I have the impression that Young of the was going to take hand, was going to handle the theme and ease support. Just want to give you guys a heads up about that. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I think that um, uh, we we you know um, I, the, since she was away, um, if, you know a lot of the others have have done the Vietnamese for their projects and she's reviewed them. Um, but um, yeah, just just make that clear. You know when you when you sort of hand over the file and you know you're moving on to another project, and then we can we can get that taken care of. Okay. Uh, Dave, we'll probably need to run through the shipping process. I haven't really um, gone through it yet, so I'd like yeah. to see yeah. how, like a shipping workflow, and maybe to see how you guys do it yeah. at the moment. We can do that on Monday, I think. Awesome. There seems to be a lot of utility scripts that you guys are using to get this done. Uh, well, mainly font vaporing. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. I think we can wrap up. Okay. Okay. Can I show you uh, uh, a solution I found for fixing kerning problems? I think you're. I think you're for. Okay. Okay. Here, here we go. Uh, uh, okay. So, yeah, I'm going to open up. The original source, a legacy source file. Uh, it's a glitch file. Uh, you see that? Okay. So, uh, yeah, the, I go to kerning, and then, boom, 2,000 kerning pairs, and so the kerning is extrapolated. 
It looks like it had some like original uh, kerning process, but it, it, it's extrapolated, and I don't have any other source file. So, um, and then um, I I did all this work manually, and um, in the end, I I managed to have 582 kerning pairs, and all of them are in classes. So I manually compressed the kerning, and then. Um, deleted stray kerning pairs and added new ones. And here's a better way to do it. So that would save time. So first, it has no classes. So I run my, I'm just going to make sure it's no classes. So I, first I run my script for the encoding. So boom. OK, there. So now all the classes are there. And now I can compress the kerning. So I'm just selecting everything, compress. And then voila, it's um, a thousand kerning pairs. I'm just going to see if I can compress it one more time. Uh, 633. Yeah, OK, so that's, uh, yeah. And then um, there are, I'm not sure if this can be compressed too. Compress screen and just can try this. Okay, now. I Sorry, I am I seeing you hitting this compress button and it gets more and more compressed every single time? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh, something's not right about that. It should either be a hundred percent or not. That's that's weird for me. Sorry, I just have to. Yeah, yeah it's, it's by the way, it's it's the second time in, in two days that I see something similar to this, which is kind of uh, glyph scripting stuff. I'm going to show you that we have to we have to look at these things. It's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so then the logic is there are like straight kerning pairs, like for example TC, because obviously there's a kerning class T and O, and T, TC kerning pair is unnecessary. And if I just remove it like this, then the kerning value <coughs> aligns to the kerning class of O, and this is some cleanup work that needs to be done manually after um, trying to automate this solution. So then I would go through all of these pairs and decide if there are exceptions that I need to keep or if they should be eliminated. Uh, so and you see there are, like for example, YE, this is also an unnecessary kerning pair because I also, I'm also going to delete it. But maybe why acute would be different because of the accent. So, so is is my question is is there a better way to do it? Um, like to automate it? You've just made my day. I think watching that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was quite entertaining. Um, <laughs> yeah. We what we used to do was we used to if it was all completely unflattened and then you had classes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it kind of works in the same approach as what you did there. It would, unfortunately, it would um, also remove all the exceptions, uh -huh. and then you'd have to re, re add the exceptions. So I, I, I just find it crazy that you're hitting the button and more are disappearing. Hit it again out of curiosity. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah okay. I, I'm not sure what's the logic behind that, but. Well, mm. you should first select all in the in the kerning window. Oh. Click in the kerning window, select all, and then hit it again. Not here in the kerning window. <coughs> Actually, there's a there's a lift script for removing kerning exceptions, and I think it's a it's better to I, I would prefer the method as Mark suggested, like just to remove all exceptions and then manually recreate the exceptions. It's much easier than removing the unnecessary quarter. So if there's, I'm going to try going this, to try this, the, the, this remove kerning exceptions, remove kerning exceptions. Break, break. and if not, I'm not, open, I'm open to this. Yes. Uh, this is very easily scriptable as well if it doesn't exist, like very easy. It's got to exist somewhere. This problem happens all the time. Uh, okay. 
All right. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. That, that's all. Thank you, Alexi. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah. Dave? Dave? Yep. Let's see, frozen again. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Uh, hmm. I guess this wraps up the. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> yeah, Dave, Dave is also like a master of this. You know, show like suddenly he disappears. <laughs> Maybe his notebook is. He has some problems with the notebook. Crapped out. And we're, we're he not wrote it. He, he had a new MacBook. He started <laughs> to install it, and then he had some hardware problem again. And now he's back on the Chrome. Oh, but no, he signed off. And it's gonna come up, hop back in. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I think it's we. I think Dave said that it, it's wrapped up. I just stepped in with the kerning thing. Yeah. Right. It's still live. It's still alive. I wonder now, if, if, now, if, if only Dave can only stop Dave it, or if, if it stops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. How yeah. we can talk about Dave? <laughs> it's recording. He's going to hear this later. <laughs> it's a trick. Yeah, it's it all planned. It's going to be live until the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, until Dave. <there's, laughs> and he's not going to stop it. So it's not going to stop Reality. <laughs> reality. <laughs> Right. Um, um. Uh, thank you for showing that, Alexi. I'm going to see if I can find you a script. If not, we can quickly write one up. It's like a ten-liner. It's nothing. Okay, awesome. Okay, awesome. But thank you. It was very entertaining to see that because it's that was like final record skipping type of stuff. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, Koshi has, all, has also a script showing on all um, unlocked pairs, which is you know, a visual, yep. as well. visual as well. Yep. Okay, good. Very good. Oh. Right, I'm going to go and get some lunch. I need a kebab yeah. or something like that. Okay. Okay. okay good. Uh, Mr. Thomas, I'll chat to you later. Yes, we'll definitely talk later. Okay, okay. see you later, mate. Okay, see you, folks. Bye. Have a good time, everybody. Uh...